What did I tell you? Top of the league again. Hello and welcome to the show. This is what's in store for you tonight. Two very different ex-football managers, the outspoken Barry Fry and the smooth Swede Sven Joran Eriksson. Movie star Vern Troyer is a complete sports nut. His views on United coming up. And strategy talks to star in the in the hood and number one rapper Tinchy Strider. Plus, we've got music from Manchester's Nine Blackouts. Yeah, the fantastic Nine Blackouts, we'll hear from them later. In the studio, though, we've got radio and TV legend. On the music side, of course, whispering Bob Harris. Great to see you, Terry. I know, fantastic to see you, and a big United <laughs> fan as well. Yeah, 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 since, since uh, Munich. A man of discerning taste. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get back to that, that uh, later. <laughs> and comedian, writer and actor, <laughs> and Bolton Wanderers fan, Dave Spikey. How are you, mate? You all right? Yeah, the usual day then for you yesterday, was it Dave Bolton yes. getting beat? <laughs> it, well, I thought you, I think there's encouraging signs there, to be honest with you, from the, from the last couple of seasons. We have been the long ball team, but he's, he's getting a balance right, he's getting a blend right, I think, Megson. So I've got fingers crossed, to be honest with you. I thought we played well. We day. have been a long ball team. Yeah. Every game against Bolton's been like a World War I Listen, battle. <laughs> Lobbing long bombs we played, we played from Spurs, distance. We played Spurs last week, 2 all. Last, last game, 2 all, And we outplayed them. And they scored two from long ball to crouch in knockdowns. You know what I mean? Oh, I so, saw, I saw um, that that game was like a World War I battle. It was an artillery we're battle. We're playing all right. We've got two young lads in midfield. We'll be all right. OK, well... He's, he's a good lad, though, Kevin Davis, isn't he? He's fun. Ken, Kevin Davis... Emileski, England, excuse me. <laughs> Kevin Davis should be in the England squad. You've nailed it there. If you're watching week in, week out, he's all, he's all round game. On the floor, he's fast, he's quick for a big man, he's superb in the air, he can hold the ball up, he's got everything. Brave. Um, he's, he's brave, brave yeah. and, you know, but he's, uh, he, he just doesn't score enough goals and he's playing for Bolton. He's got a first touch like my shot. He has not. He's, <laughs> he, he has, he, he is, I've seen your shot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, so there you go. Who would you rather manage, England, Fabio Capello or Dave Spikey? Answers on a postcard <laughs> soon. Right, let's have a look at your proper job now, All Dave. Right, okay. Here's you in action. <clears throat> you must, at some stage, find an opportunity where you could say something funny or do something funny. And you just go, I'm good. no, I better not. You should do it. You should go for it. Seize the moment. And um, I'll give you some examples, tried and tested examples. Please do at least one of these, some of it. So the first one is, when Debenhams have got a big sale on, right, and they've got a Blue Cross sale on, they pack so many claws on a rack that you can hardly move them. Go and hide behind a rack. <laughs> and when a woman comes looking through them like that, just go, pick me. That's a <laughs> Or... Go into the changing rooms at Debenhams, put the curtain across, when an assistant walks past, get your head about halfway down and go, excuse me, love, can you get us some paper? There's not in this one. <laughs> what? <laughs> or, on your next flight anywhere, once they've served the drinks and the food and it's all gone a bit quiet, a bit quiet, just press your call button. When the stewardess leans over, goes, yes, go, no, I can't fly a plane. What makes you think I can fly a plane? I'm laughing at me all <laughs> No, that's good, though. They're good. You haven't heard them before. No, I've not. No, not like that. Fantastic. That's it. The best medicine to all I've described yeah. as a pure comedy, comedy gold by the Lancashire Evening Post. They should know. They should know. Is that bribery and corruption? <laughs> no, no, it's gone doing really well, this tour. I mean, I would say that, obviously, because I want to flog the DVD and some tickets, but it's, um, it's my third tour, and the first tour was like, largely crafted from the first, all the material I'd got off the years on the circuit, really. But I sat down and wrote this one from scratch and kept it fresh all the way through and keep renewing it and keep taking bits out and putting bits in. And so I'm enjoying it. I think that comes across when... If you're having a good time on stage, it comes across, you know. And I do two hours and it flies past. 
just for me anyway, don't know about them. Because, um, I mean, you've always been fantastic and you've been on the comedy circuit around here now for, what, 20 years? I started in 1991, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, Buzz yeah. Club in Charlton. Yeah, yeah. You used yeah. to do that. But, but again, with Peter Kay, you, you supplied him with most of his material. So Either directly allegedly, or indirectly. <laughs> we, I mean, we share a lot of comedy ground, me and Peter, and um, when we were at Phoenix Nights, you know, that came out. Um, and that's why Neil Fitzmaurice wrote it with us. Uh, he was a mate of Peter's off the circuit. And we needed somebody from to come in from left field, really, because we just write a scene and both think it was hilarious. And then Neil would come in and go, well, hang on a minute, you're missing a trick, because if he does that, why doesn't he do that and that? And, and, and it added another dimension to it, you know. But me and Peter have always been very similar in comedy, yeah. yeah and, and how did they respond to you down south? Because sometimes they're, they're not too sure about northern comedy, are they? I've, I've never had a problem, you know. I think funny's funny. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but um, if you make it accessible and you don't... You don't regionalise it, so I don't talk about it. If I'm, well, I do actually, I do talk about Wigan. I used to do a whole routine about Wigan, you know, because it's, um, it's funny, isn't it? And, um, but but if, if you just set it up, because Wigan, I don't even know much about Wigan, but it's a pie town, isn't it? It's the pie capital of Europe. Every other shop's a pie shop in Wigan. The only reason meat pies have got little O in the top of them is so Wigan people can pick four up at once. That's the only reason <laughs> that I can afford a pie. But, uh, and so I used to do a whole routine about this thing, the pie culture of Wigan. And if you set it up right, if you explain the background, then they'll still go for it down south, you know. So um, I was, I think, self-conscious about the accents at first when I first yeah. went down. I thought, oh, I'm a bit, bit broad, I'm a bit... But, you know, the number of people who come, after, come up afterwards and say, you know what, I love the accent. And, and you, you think, well, that's, that's what I was worried about. So it sort of works, I think. I didn't understand one word you said then, Dave. <laughs> yeah. I can't even no. <laughs> no, brilliant. But, but again, when you're doing that, though, about Wigan and pies, yeah. aren't you reinforcing southern stereotypes of northerners? I don't think so. Are you? That's our way of life, and we're not embarrassed about that. Do you eat pies in Wigan? Have you even got a pie here? But um, no, it's our way of life. You know, I don't, I don't ridicule it. I just say. Uh, that's the way it is in Wigan. I don't ridicule it. That'll be the next <laughs> tour. Oh, you've got a book out as well, haven't you? Yeah. And what is that? Oh, um... Yeah, I'm showing um, it there. 